really interesting story and a difficult question to ask ourselves. Would we be willing to get in that wheelbarrow? I have to say that I would find it very difficult uh, getting in that guy's wheelbarrow, uh, partly because I'm afraid of heights and I've been to Niagara Falls and man, those falls are so powerful, they're huge. Um, but the key difference uh, when it comes to faith, the faith that we're talking about, is that we're not trusting in that guy, Charles Blondin, mm. uh, to take us across the tightrope, but that we're actually trusting in Almighty God, mm. who is above all things and who sees all things um, and can do all things. It's amazing, isn't it? But getting back to the topic of actions and deeds, here's a couple more questions just for you to maybe pause the video and spend a moment pondering on. Why is saying something such as, I believe in Jesus, not enough? Why do we need to do as well? Are faith and deeds linked? Why do you think this? Alan, any thoughts? Hey, well, I would say that um, faith and action have to come together. Mm -hmm. Our actions show our faith and the faith is the substance and the motivation behind or for our actions. Mm -hmm. And also our doing gives the evidence to the words that we say. Um, so for example, if I were to say to you that I loved you, but then I were to not do anything to show you that love, like I'd ignored you, or I was really frustrated when you spoke to me, or many other examples, um, my actions would not necessarily be reflecting mm -hmm. what I was saying or what I even believed maybe. Mm -hmm. So similarly, how can we expect our relationship with God to be any different? Our faith and our actions are linked as genuine, true followers of Jesus. Don't just simply believe alone, um, but those beliefs drive us to live differently and to live more like Christ, like we were looking at last week in Philippians, and to show Christ's love through our actions to other people around us. I agree. Our, be our beliefs should influence how we live. And as the summary video said earlier, the book of James is full of great wisdom and practical examples of what that looks like. Let's look at one of those examples in more detail now from James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, which talks about the tongue. James 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steel steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a word of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the course of one's life on fire and itself on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Great. Thanks, Kyle, for reading that for us. There's a lot in those verses, and I would encourage you to spend a bit of time considering those metaphors a bit further about the power and dangers of the tongue. Did any stand out to you, Helen? Yeah, for me, what really stands out is the image of a small spark starting a huge fire. But it's so easy for maybe an unkind comment or a bit of gossip to slip out. But before we know it, we can have caused huge upset and hurt as a result of what we've said. Yeah. So as we think about how our faith, faith leads us to act differently, and particularly in the example of the tongue, 
here's a final question for you. So what ways do you think that your faith um, demands a change in what you say or how you say it? For me, it is thinking before I speak, particularly thinking about how the other person would feel about what I was saying uh, and whether it would be good and helpful for them. Yeah, I'm reminded of a verse in Ephesians 4 where it says that only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs should come out of our mouths so that it may benefit those who listen. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, just to summarise the main point today, um, we want to emphasise that while it is only by God's grace that he saves us through our faith and that our actions do not get us to heaven, that our actions actually do reveal and live out that faith. They have to come together. So I really encourage you to dig deeper into the book of James and explore some of the practical wisdom that we've been talking about, um, about how we act differently and how that reveals and shows the faith that we have. So uh, part of the way we can dig deeper in doing that is uh, seeing you on that Zoom call, Sunday night, 7.45. Um, just be great to catch up and have a bit more chat. Absolutely. Shall we pray? Definitely. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and thank you for the wisdom and the guidance that it gives us. We thank you that we can be sure that we are saved because of what Jesus did on the cross, that he paid the price once and for all for our sins and that we can be forgiven and made right with you. Father, I pray that we would know that truth and that that would influence the way that we live our lives. Father, help us to love other people well and help us particularly to be careful with the words that we say, Father, pray that you would give us more um, self-control so that we might better love one another. Father, pray that you would help all of us um, over the next few weeks, help us to stay in touch and help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. Thank you that even though the world is maybe a scary and a different place at the moment, that your love and care for us never changes and help us to remember that and hold on to that each day. Amen. Amen. So as we said, it would be really great to catch up with you on Sunday evening on Zoom at 7.45, um, just to find out how you're doing and maybe chat a wee bit more about some of these questions. Also, if you're wanting to find out any more, either about that Zoom call or what we're doing, then please get in touch. If you're not already part of our YF WhatsApp group, then please get your parents to email me, helen at kildufflochristiancentre.org so that we can get you added. And yeah, keep an eye out for more information about what will be happening after the October holidays. So if we don't see you or speak to you, we hope you have a really um, great holiday and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye, see you later.